I'll tell you why. Because we do not believe that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above. I want you to try it. You try to come believing God is able to do. Now, we're not telling him what to do or dictate him. He does what he wants. He's sovereign. But I need to come believing that God can do it. And praying with expectation based upon this faith in God. This is praying for all the saints and for me. We have a responsibility to pray for each other. We've been commanded to do so. But he says, for me, about utterance, notice, and boldness, because I'm an ambassador. And I like this. Why is it important to pray about him being an ambassador? What is an ambassador? Someone who is representing the power and authority of someone else. The embassy is our representation in other countries. Our interests. And if you're an ambassador, you must be careful that the message and the purpose of the one who has employed you is very, very clear. The worst thing you can do as an ambassador is to misrepresent the person who has employed you. But you notice every now and again, the president has the power and the authority to make someone an ambassador of goodwill to go and represent the country and the embassy. And that's why when you bomb an embassy, you're basically saying your feelings of the country that is represented. Paul says, I've been employed by the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am an ambassador. I am representing him. He has given me a message to give to the people. So I need you to pray. Pray for me for boldness. That I'll be able to speak. I'm in bonds, but pray for boldness. That I might have clarity in my message. That I might be able to speak the mystery of the gospel. That I might not misrepresent it. That's what we are as pastors. That's what you are. You are an ambassador of the Lord Jesus. He has given us a message. And we need to give it and mindful of representing him, not only with the message, but with the life. I hate to be an ambassador and somehow misrepresent the one who has employed me to give that message. Then he closes it out. Tychicus. Some believe he was the pastor of Colossians, Colossae. The saying is mention of him. He's a beloved brother. He's faithful, minister of the Lord. And he'll be the one who'll make known the things between us. No internet, no phones. Depending upon messages to go back and forth. Paul is trusting Tychius to come and to go to make sure the messages. Notice verse 21 that I but that ye also may know my affairs and how I do. Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister of the Lord, shall make known to you all things whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that ye might know our affairs and that ye might comfort your hearts. Can't you see the importance of an ambassador or somebody who is sent giving an accurate message? You know how we do. You like to add? to the story, take away from the story. Somebody call and give a prayer request. We add, we, we add. Pray for brother so-and-so. He's injured his, uh, one of his toe on his foot. Pass on to you, pray for so-and-so. He's injured. They say he might have to go into the hospital. <laughs> By the time he gets around to the next person, he enters, so he may have to go in the hospital. Surgery has already been scheduled. <laughs> it gets to me, I call, brother, I'm praying about your surgery. What surgery? <laughs> so now we're very, very careful about the passing of information because it gets added, take away, and so forth. It's, it's so important to give back. So you can imagine here, 
the people are going to have joy or sorrow based on what Tychicus says. And so he's faithful. He's faithful. He's going to be accurate. What he tells you, what he tells me. And then Paul closes the letter. And so his custom. With peace and grace. One thing finally, as we close out this book. They begin to emerge, however, now, a group of true believers of Jesus and those who are name only. Look at what he says. Peace be to the brethren and love with faith from God the Father and Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. But it already began to emerge. Oh, an emerging church was emerging. All right. Just like today. Not an emerging church of truth, but an emerging church that had the form of godliness, but not the power. Paul said, those who are sincerely followers of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What does it look like? Those that are passionate about the Savior, those that are intentional about walking with him and following his steps. Paul says, peace, grace. Through the study has helped me to see Christ greater. My wife and I hold each other accountable in this area. Our worship, our service, our giving, all that we do is deeper now because we've asked God to be magnified in our life. I hope that your worship is greater, your service is greater, your giving is greater, your life is greater, all because of the greatness of the Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you.